Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first X Factors webinar. X Factors is founded by the European Union within the Horizon 2020 program, and it's a research project to improve prevention, early detection, and control of Xylella fastidiosa. The, the topic of this first uh, webinar is a general overview on the key aspects of the of this detrimental plant pathogenic bacterium and the current uh, situation uh, on its occurrence in uh, in Europe. The webinar will be held by Maria Agnès Jacques, that is a team leader at uh, RIHS. She's a a senior scientist working as a plant bacteriologist, and she had coordinated several research projects on seed health and epidemi epidemiology of plant pathogenic bacteria. So today, it's my pleasure to give this uh, first webinar of the XI Factor project. And so I will present some general features of this pathogen and give an overview of the current situation in Europe. The, this talk today uh, was uh, prepared with uh, Sophie Sebron from my team, but also with Maria Saponari and Blanca Landa, who share a lot of uh, slides uh, concerning the situation in Italy and in Spain, respectively. So just to let you know where I'm from, so my uh, institute is localized in the western part of France, here in Angers. And uh, I am so the team leader of the emergence, systematics and ecology of plant associated bacteria team. So this uh, talk today will be uh, given in more or less three parts. So after a short introduction, I will present some general features of Xylella fastidiosa and then give some element on the current situation in Italy, in France and in Spain. So first, as an introduction, uh, let's begin by a quick summary of the history of Xylella fastidiosa as a plant pathogenic bacterium. And this history can be entitled a recent expansion of an old problem. Indeed, the first report of a disease that is now proven to be caused by Xylella fastidiosa has been made in 1892, so more than a century ago, and this report was written by Newton Pierce and deals with the California vine disease. But it took nearly a century before the bacterium was isolated, described, and named. Indeed, the first isolation of the bacterium has been successful only in 1978, and then, based on the ability to cultivate the bacterium in vitro, it could be described and named, and it was done and published in 1987. The name of the bacterium is linked to its preferred localization in the xylem vessels of the host plant, so that gives the name of the genus, Xylella, and then the name of the species, Fastidiosa, is linked to its fastidious behavior in vitro, which means that the bacterium is quite difficult to grow in vitro. This bacterium has another very particular feature, which is essential to consider, and it concerns its natural means of dispersion that is linked to sap-sucking insects. We will uh, detail that a little bit later on. So the bacterium, Xylella, is a road-shaped bacterium that belongs to the class of gamma proteobacteria. Its closest phylogenetic neighbors are the well-known plant-associated and mostly plant pathogenic bacterium of the genus Xanthomonas, as you can see here on this phylogenetic tree focused on the beta and gamma proteobacterium, which presents the details of this more general tree of bacteria. So, 
Xylella is uh, limited to the xylem vessel of the plants. Indeed, it is not known to colonize any other tissue of the plant, and in particular, it has never been found associated with the parenchyma cells that are adjacent to the xylem vessels. Hence, this bacterium enters in contact mostly with plant cells. As you can see, maybe on the image with here, you can see that xylella in the xylem vessels aggregates and produce a copious matrix of exopolysaccharides that you can see here, which are forming uh, biofilms that may plug the vessels. So symptoms of water stress, which are evidenced here as leaf scorch, results from high population of bacteria in the xylem tissue, as well as the overproduction of defense compounds, such as pectin, tyloses, that are produced by the host plant in response to the infection. Embolisms, which are air bubbles, may eventually form and help also to plug the xylem vessels and to limit the xylem function and the, to enhance the water stress. So <clears throat> these symptoms are quite typical, as you can see here, wilting and uh, leaf scorch on the leaf of olive tree. So xylella is naturally solely transmitted by insects from plant to plants. Many different insects belonging to the Cicadellidae, Cercopidae, and Cicadidae family can transmit this bacterium. And this vector transmission of xylella has been described in detail in the United States. And we can say, based on this huge amount of paper dealing with vector transmission of xylella, that there is no transstadial transmission. This means that the insect lo lose the bacterium at each molt. So the bacterium doesn't circulate within the vector. There is no transovarial transmission, me meaning that the females that are infected do not transfer the bacterium to their offspring. There is also no vector species xylella fastidiosa genotype specificity. Apparently, this is a very important trait and no specificity between the species of the vector and the genotype of the bacterium was ever found based on the American um, experience. There is no latent period meaning that as soon as the insect acquires the bacterium, it is able to transmit it to the plant. This also indicates that the bacterium doesn't circulate within the vector. The transmission efficiency of vector increases with plant access period. So the longer the bacterium is on the plant, the more efficient it could transmit. Xylella fastidiosa is persistent in vectors. That means that it is persistent in adults that do not molt. And we mentioned earlier on that Xylella uh, cannot uh, transmit between stage, the stages the bacterium. Xylella multiplies in vectors, forming a colony on the cuticle of the foregut. We will be able to see later on a very famous picture that has been taken in scanning electron microscopy showing the biofilm on the cuticle of the foregut of insects. Bacterial populations in plants impact the acquisition efficiency. I mean the bacterial population sizes in plants impact acquisition efficiency with higher population sizes and higher efficiency. And the behavior of insects impact, of course, the transmission efficiency. And indeed, insects 
may preferentially feed on plant tissue that harbor lower Zellala fastidiosa population. And so that would lead to lower probability of pathogen acquisition. And insects may discriminate against highly symptomatic plants. So leading to the avoidance of these plants and ultimately led to less transmission. Ah, yes. So as a consequence of human activities, xylella can also be disseminated by infected plants for planting. And this is responsible, of course, for this, the dissemination at large scale between continents of xylella. The pruning operation and wood self grafting are surprisingly poorly efficient in the way of transmitting xylella. This is quite surprising for a xylem uh, inhabiting bacterium. Contaminated tools and pruning equipment are poorly efficient tools for disseminating xylella. Just uh, to come back to insect vectors, here you have a picture of the middle spittle bug, Philenius spumarius, that has been shown earlier on in Italy as the main insect vector of xylella within olive grove. Olive groves. So <clears throat> xylella fastidiosa is naturally transmitted by insect vectors. As a consequence of human activity, it can be also transmitted by infected plants for planting. And it is apparently not transmitted by seeds. This has been shown quite clearly in the case of citrus seed. Citrus seed can be contaminated. This is also the case for coffee beans. However, no transmission to plantlet was ever shown. So this bacterium can be uh, seed borne, but it's not seed transmitted. This is very, very important to consider. So the disease caused by xylella are very, uh, can be very severe, as it is uh, clear in Italy, but symptoms may not be always very characteristic. Indeed, the symptoms are those of an hydric stress. So they are leaf scorches, as we see here in olives, wilting of foliage, withering of branches, debac, stunting, and death of plants. We can also have dwarfism, and dwarfism is very typical of the phony peach disease. So a large range of symptoms that are not characteristic and are very typical of an hydric stress. The host range of Xylella fastidiosa taken as a whole, so at the, G, at the species level, is very, very, very large. More than 560 species have been shown to be host of Xylella. This was... Um, the list of symptomatic of hosts has been updated last year by EFSA. Most of these uh, host plants are perennial plants, but not all. And a very important point to have in mind is that while some severe symptoms can be seen, as illustrated here, most plants naturally remain asymptomatic while being infected by xylella. This is very important and, a lot, and has a lot of consequences on epidemic surveillance and management of the disease. So <clears throat> here you can see, thanks to Maria who will share these slides, an olive orchard that was planted in April, so in the Apulia area where xylella is uh, infecting olive groves. The first infection in this grove were detected in October of the same year on symptomless plants. So nearly six months afterwards. So it is quite quick, but indeed, inoculum is everywhere around and it took more than six months to be able to detect the bacterium in these plants and no symptoms were uh, visible at that time. 
The length of the asymptomatic period or latency period vary according to strains and plant species. And this can be uh, monitored following inoculation of plants. So you, here you have a summary of data that were uh, recorded following inoculation of various host species with various Glylella strains in uh, Maria's lab and in my lab. So when you inoculate Xylella fastidiosa, subspecies fastidiosa strains on grapes, it took from two to three months to see the first symptoms. Xylella fastidiosa subspecies multiplex, and we did that with the two ST that are present in France, on Polygala myrtifolia, give symptoms a little bit more longer than on grape. You need three to four months to be able to observe the, the first symptoms. For Xylella fastidiosa subspecies pauca on Polygala myrtifolia, it takes longer. Six months are required to have systemic infection and up to nine months to see symptoms. The inoculation of Xylella fastidiosa subspecies pauca, so the CDC um, strains on citrus tree, can lead to symptoms in eight to 12 months. And in olive trees, nine months are required to have a systemic infection, but from 14 months are required for symptom expression. And sometimes it can be very, very uh, much longer than that. Indeed, for the recent update of the pest risk assessment of Xylella that was published uh, two weeks ago by the EFSA, we did a very uh, sound analysis of the literature of inoculation uh, tests that were published in order to find data on the asymptomatic incubation period. And these data were then analyzed by biostatisticians from the EFSA to be able to determine some median time for expression of the symptoms in various host bacterium combination. So, for example, the rapid development of symptoms of Xylella fastidiosa fastidiosa uh, on almond tree, but the lack of symptoms in other plants after five years makes the determination of the length of the asymptomatic period quite challenging for parametric methods. And we can um, <clears throat> remind, recall that the time for 95% change of symptoms in the case of almond inoculated by strains of the subspecies fastidiosa is very long and is two years, okay? However, in the case of grape inoculated by other fastidiosa, fastidiosa strains, then the length of the asymptomatic period is shorter, estimated around 30, 35 uh, days as a mean, as a median, sorry, as a median. But <clears throat> in order to have 95% of chance to have symptoms, then a uh, Length of 190 days are needed. So, a little bit more than uh, six months. So, <clears throat> you can see that the asymptomatic period is really variable here on these various uh, species and for the same uh, subspecies. For example, on almond, the inoculation by Xylella fastidiosa subspecies multiplex strains leads quite quickly to symptoms occurrence, while in shade trees, the incubation period is much more longer. And the longest asymptomatic period was found following the inoculation of poca strain on olive trees or of more strains on blueberry. But here on blueberries, there is only one experiment, 
And in fact, the problem is that a lot of plants remain asymptomatic. 70% of the plants remain asymptomatic after the last uh, symptom observation of the plants, which was made uh, two months after inoculation. So this uh, value here is not, uh, we are not very confident with this value. So it is very, very important to take into consideration this very long asymptomatic uh, period on plants following the infection by Xylella. So the widespread distribution of Xylella fastidiosa strains infecting many important crops and the economic losses that are experienced by the citrus and the vine industries have made Xylella fastidiosa a major economical concern in the Americas. And <clears throat> as early as the year 2000, the first genome sequence of a Xylella strain was released. It should be mentioned for the youngest of us that this was the first release of a plant pathogenic bacterium. And so it was Xylella fastidiosa. And it was a strain 9A5C that everybody knows and that is pathogenic on citrus and that was isolated in Brazil. So the sequencing efforts have, of course, been extending nowadays to other Xylella fastidiosa strains and I, that were isolated for a large range of hosts. And currently, draft or complete genome sequences have been obtained for more than 50 genome sequences that are available publicly in genome in GeneBank. Sorry. So based on this wide genome sequences availability, a lot of uh, genome comparisons were made, uh, were made by various groups, uh, and they allowed us to learn a lot on the life traits that are crucial for Xylella. So first, what is very uh, impressive is to observe that Xylella fastidiosa faced to its closest uh, neighbors that are the xanthomonas face a massive genome reduction. Indeed, its genome size is around 2.5 megabase pair, while the genome size of most xanthomonas strains is around is around 5 to 5.5 megabases. <clears throat> Uh, studies that was made earlier on in the late uh, in the in 2009 i think uh, showed that a uh, comparison of the genome of some xanthomonas strain xylella fastidiosa and uh, xanthomonas albinineans that is pathogenic on uh, sugarcane showed that this lineage that is shared by Xanthomonas albilineans, this xylem inhabitant of the sugarcane and Xylella fastidiosa show also a uh, loss of gene in comparison to other Xanthomonas strains that have a more diverse uh, life uh, trait, that have more diverse life traits than these two pathogens. And they can occupy much more diverse niches than Xylella or Xanthomonas albilineans. So <clears throat> this lineage, so the most recent common ancestor shared by Xanthomonas albilineans and Xylella, lost around 500 genes from the common ancestor shared with other Xanthomonas strains. And later on, the branch uh, the branch of Xylella shared again more than 600 genes. And this loss of genes results from single events of deletion. So, for example, the flagella gene cluster, that is quite large, more than 35 genes were lost in one event. 
but this loss of genes could also result from the pseudogenization and short deletion events. So, for example, in the RPF cluster, which is quite important because it is involved in the regulation of pathogenicity genes in Xylella, show the loss of two genes. But this cluster remains functional, however. So, here it is very important to have in mind this massive genome reduction experienced by this two types of xylem-associated bacterium, so Xylella fastidiosa and Xanthomonas albilineans. So how can we explain this uh, genome reduction? So as I mentioned, this genome reduction is shown here by two bacterium, bacteria that are inhabiting a very narrow niche as it is the xylem vessels, these bacteria, these bacteria are not known to inhabit other niches, except in the case of Xylella, as we know that this bacterium also inhabit the insect for gut. However, these two niches are very narrow in terms of um, quantity, diversity of nutrients, and it is also nutrient limited in terms of quantity. So this genome reduction could be a consequence of an adaptation to these narrow uh, niches. But another explanation that has been made in the literature came also from the transmission by insects for Xylella fastidiosa. Indeed, each time the population is transmitted from plant to plant by insect, only a very limited quantity of bacterium is transmitted. So at each insect transmission, the population experiences a large bottleneck that could lead to the selection of only a part of the population that could have presented some gene loss. So another very important trait that was uh, illustrated by genome analysis is the absence of a very important uh, virulence factor. So I was just mentioning that a large difference, a big difference uh, between Xylella and its uh, closest neighbors are the absence of the type 3 secretion system that is a main virulence factor for, xylella, for xanthomonads. And so it is absence absent in Xylella. But Xylella fastidiosa has other ways of interacting with the plant. First, as we mentioned earlier on, it cannot swim, but it can still move within the xylem vessels thanks to the type 4 pilus that allow the bacterium to um, have a twitching motility that has been very well characterized in some human pathogens. Then, Dilella is able to attach to the xylem vessels and to form biofilm. Biofilms are very, very important for plant uh, diseases, as we uh, detailed earlier on. These biofilms can eventually plug the xylem vessels and allow the bacterium to form large population in xylem vessels and to be transmitted by insect vectors. Here you can see on these very famous uh, slides that came from Steve Lindo's lab, the polarly attached cells of Xylella to the foregut tissue of insects, and the biofilms here are forming a mat-like structure, while in plant xylem vessels, the cells are in any orientation, here GFP cells of Xylella, and they aggregate in uh, biofilms that are rich in matrix within the xylem vessels. And here the arrows illustrate the pits that cannot be uh, used by large biofilms, but can be used by cells, planktonic cells, to move from one vessel to another. And here you have another type of slides, of um, picture showing the presence of, in green, alive cells of xylella in xylem vessels and dead cells in red in largely contaminated 
uh, xylem vessels of xylella that are symptomatic. So the symptoms are linked to densely populated uh, vessels that finally led to the death of the xylella cells. Xylella is able to synthesize and to secrete a large range of plant cell wall degrading enzymes that are very important for acquisition of nutrients and also for peat degradation, so for movement in the plant. And it also relies on other enzymes such as proteases and lipases for um, <coughs> um, expression of symptoms. The, all these uh, variance factors are regulated by various uh, regulation factors, but one of the most important is the RPF gene cluster that encodes the fact diffusible factors that led to the regulation of these um, pathogenicity factors. So from uh, the time after the inoculation of the bacterium within a plant by an insect, for example, the concentration of this diffusible factor is very low because it is linked to a low population of the bacterium. Then as soon as the bacterium will multiply, the concentration is in this diffusible factor will increase. And while the concentration of DSF increase, the adhesins that are important for the stickiness to the surface will also increase as the gum production allowing the aggregation of the cells in biofilm. However, the production of type 4 pili allowing the motility and the secretion of uh, enzymes allowing the acquisition of nutrients and the degradation of pit membrane and the production of outer membrane vesicles that are important for the release of lipases and secretase and, um, and other enzymes uh, uh, apart from the bacterial cells will decrease as soon as the concentration of DSF increase. So from a plant that is asymptomatic and from which the acquisition by insect vector is very poorly efficient, we will go to a plant that presents symptoms due to this uh, abundance of xylella in some vessels and the ability of insect vector to better transmit this bacterium. Xylella is uh, not very poorly efficient in aerobic respiration, and it is also very limited in anaerobic respiration, with, which are key explanation of the limited ability of xylella to grow in vitro. Xylella is a genetically diverse uh, species, as six subspecies were described. However, one subspecies that was described, the Tashke subspecies, uh, is uh, not uh, really accepted in the community as no specimen is available and no genetic data are available. So we will not consider it in the remaining part of my talk. The subspecies Xylella fastidiosa, in this tree, I put a blue uh, square to, 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 to illustrate the lineage of this subspecies. So this tree is based on the seven, on the sequence of the seven housekeeping genes that are used to type the bacterium. So this tree here reflects the genetic uh, phylogeny, the phylogeny of the strains. So this subspecies, the fastidiosa subspecies, is very well known as it includes the strains that are responsible for the Pierce disease of grapevine, but it also includes uh, all the strains that are responsible for other diseases such as almond leaf scorch or alpha far leaf scorch. Here you have some symptoms of the Pierce disease, which is of very great importance in California, as the losses were estimated to reach 104 million US dollars per year as direct and indirect um, losses as a consequence of this disease. So the, the disease can be seen as early as in spring as the 
growth is delayed, then symptoms occur on the margin of the leaves, as you can see here, and it can reach a large quantity of leaves of plant, per plants. Then you can have an uneven wood maturity and persistent pitions. These symptoms are quite characteristic, but very difficult to see. And these strains are transmitted by various insect vectors, among which the glassy wind sharp shooter, Omalodicia vitripenis, that has been introduced in California not a long time ago, and the blue green sharp shooter, Grassocephala atropunctata, that was present in California earlier on. So <clears throat> then, strain forming the Sunday subspecies were um, evidence as involved in the oleander leaf scorch. The strains from the fastidiosa and sandy subspecies could originate from Central America and were introduced in the US in the late 90s for fastidiosa and the late, uh, in the late 80s for 80th century for fastidiosa and in the late 90th century for uh, sandy. The subspecies multiplex here group strains that are responsible for various diseases on a large range of trees, ornament tree, ornamental trees, forest trees, fruit trees, but also ornamental such as polygala. It's uh, strains of this subspecies that were recorded in uh, now in Italy, in France and in Spain. One strain of the subspecies uh, multiplex has been introduced in um, Brazil in the beginning of the 20th century. And this strain could have recombined over there with a native Pauca strain that, uh, to form the strains that are now considered as responsible for the citrus variegated chlorosis and for the coffee leaf scorch disease. Another type of strains which are divergent from the one causing the CVC or CLS in coffee or in citrus are the strains that are present in Italy and responsible for the olive quick, olive quick decline syndrome. So Xylella fastidiosa has been uh, considered as native from the America up to 2013, where it was discovered in Europe. At that time, so Xylella, before 2013, Xylella was found in the Americas, from the north to the south, and also in Taiwan, where a divergent strain, now forming a new species, Xylella taiwanensis, has been recorded on the Asian pear tree, so Nashi tree. Xylella is a quarantine pest for Europe, as it is listed in the Annex 1, Part A, and now Section 2 of this uh, Directive 2029. And Xylella is also uh, recorded in the A2 list of the EPO region. Indeed, nowadays, the distribution of Xylella has enlarged as Xylella has been recorded in 2013 in Italy and then in other European countries. So in 2013, Italy reported the first case of Xylella in Europe in Apulia area, and this uh, epidemic affects olive groves. Then France, reported in 2015 the presence of xylella in ornamental uh, plants in Corsica and then in mainland France. The year after Spain reported also the presence of xylella in uh, Balearic Island and then in continental Spain. And in 2018, so last year, Portugal also reported the presence of xylella. These reports concern the presence of xylella outdoors, so either in natural environment, in crops, in the landscape, or in uh, groves, or in orchards. By the way, in Asia, Taiwan reported in 2012 the presence of xylella, 
that was introduced earlier on 10 years before, and it was a strain of fastidiosa fastidiosa on grapevine. Iran reported in 2014 the presence of xylella on various hosts. And there were also in between other reports of xylella in confined environments such as greenhouses or buildings in other parts of Europe. So now let's speak, uh, I will go quickly, to the situation in Italy and in France and in Spain. So in Italy, Xylella was reported first in Apulia area in 2013, and this epidemic is caused by one strain belonging to the subspecies Polka and uh, characterized by its sequence type, the sequence type 33. This is a way of characterizing at an infra subspecific level the diversity of the strain. But last year in Tuscany, Another uh, outbreak was also reported, which is caused by the strains belonging to the multiplex subspecies and forming a sequence type that was not uh, observed before. And so these two different outbreaks have, are, um, are dealt differently as the outbreak in Tuscany is under eradication, while in Apulia it is under containment. So here you can see the enlargement of the area that is affected by Zylella in Apulia. Here in 2013, around 8,000 hectares were infected around Gallipoli. And last year in 2018, this entire area is considered as contaminated by uh, Zylella. So <clears throat> it concerns more than 7,700 squared kilometers and 25 million olive trees. So it's a very large area that is contaminated now by this ST53 strain in Apulia. So here you have some very well-known symptoms of this olive quick decline syndrome caused by Zalella in Apulia that are very uh, <coughs> typical and are very frightening, in fact. So the symptoms uh, that you see in, and led to the death of the plants first begin by the scorched symptoms uh, that can be seen on the leaves of the plant, uh, leading to wilting and debug also of the leaves and finally the branches and the death of the plants. So here you have an illustration of the progression of the disease symptoms in one infected tree, but look behind, there is an entire grove that is also going to, to die, as illustrated here, so three years after. Here you can see already uh, some uh, branches that sh shows uh, several leaf scorches. Here, this uh, very old tree, more than 1,500 years old olive tree, so a kind of historical monument, uh, showed symptoms in September 2014 here, and last year it was totally dead. So this is a very severe epidemic that affects 33 other plant species than uh, Olea europaea in Apulia. Some show symptoms, but here in green you have also some species that never show symptoms. And so this strain in Apulia affects some crop species, of course, we speak, we spoke about olive tree, but also uh, cherry tree and almond tree. So here you have other kinds of symptoms on susceptible hosts that were uh, identified in Apulia and that are all quite typical, beginning by leaf scorches and ending with the death of the plants. Not in all cases, but in some cases. The strain that is responsible for, by the, for this disaster is the Dedono strain that has been, the genome of which has been sequenced. It is a strain that presents, of course, a circle uh, chromosome, but has also a plasmid that, uh, share, that has gene involved in, the, in gene exchange among strains. Various strains of this uh, Various strains 
isolated from olive trees in Apulia were sequenced and they varied uh, very with by very few uh, snips, which is quite logical with this with a single introduction, and so the very recent evolution of a single clone. The introduction of this bacterium is Apulia has been dated by uh, molecular methods as a median time of 2008, but the confidence interval is quite large. This strain in Apulia is vectored by Philenus primarius, the meta hospital bug, but also by two other vectors, Neophilenus campestris and Philenus italosignus. Some experiments made the last years in uh, olive groves show that Philenus primarius is much more efficient than the two others to is much more abundant than the two others in olive groves but is also uh, much more abundant not only in olive canopy but also in the ground vegetation and in the border plant and a lot of these insects are positive by qpcr so are contaminated by xylella fastidiosa and this contaminated portion of insect is far greater than in Neophilenus campestris, for example. So these insects are involved in the spread of xylella in the olive groves. In Tuscany, as I said earlier on, a recent outbreak has been evidenced, and this outbreak concerned only a promontory, the Monte Argentario promontory, which uh, is a demarcated area. A large range of plants, more than 70 infected plants, were found infected by Xylella and mostly are ornamental species, but also Prunus amygdalis and Ficus carica. The strain involved in this uh, outbreak is a Xylella fastidiosa subspecies multiplex strain, which is a novel sequence type as is present alleles that were not found previously anywhere else in the world. It is very close, however, to the strains that are found in other parts of EU, such as ST7 ST that are found in France or ST81 that is found in Spain. And these strains present already some biological features that are different from the closely related ST6 strain from France. It has a very different in vitro growth behavior, as we can see here on a quite uh, usual media for Xylella. It apparently grows very quickly compared to uh, ST6. So in France, two areas are contaminated by Xylella. In Corsica, it was first isolate, uh, isolated and identified in Corsica. A lot of plant species, 36 plant species, are contaminated by Xylella fastidiosa. <clears throat> and uh, some, uh, most of the fossae were contaminated by Xylella fastidiosa by the mean of Polygala myrtifolia plants, but uh, a third of them didn't harbor Polygala myrtifolia plants, and so concern other plants that were also contaminated by xylella. This contamination were found around uh, the seaside in Corsica, but up to nearly uh, 1,000 meters of altitude in the mountain. So now the entire Corsica region is a demarcated area. It is hence considered as totally infected by xylella fastidiosa. This is in contrast to the PACA region, so Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur area, the French Riviera and Provence area, where uh, outbreaks occurs only uh, in a few places. So seven, 67 fossils are so far recorded and 23 plant species are contaminated by Xylella and we still follow an eradication approach. So here you have an illustration of the plants that are host of Xylella in France. Most of them are ornamental plants that are common to Mediterranean shrubs, but a few of them, Lavandula angustifolia and Helichrysum italicum, have a regional impact, economic impact, and they, as they are used for the production of essential oil. So the symptoms 
are very limited in comparison to those seen in Italy and are mostly limited to uh, leaf scorches, except on Polygala, where the death of plant is very frequently recorded. So here you can see the death of uh, Polygala in uh, Corsica. So you have also symptoms of Rosmarinus on almond trees or on Corsican gores. It should be said that in uh, Corsica, olive trees show some decline, the cause of which is currently unknown. So the diversity of Zalela strains that have been found in France concern mainly two lineages within the multiplex subspecies. These two lineages are now quite well known, ST7 and ST6, that were also found in other places in uh, Europe. And these uh, strains were well known before in the US when, where they were associated with diseases on almonds or hope for ST7, for example, but only on almond for ST6 strain. So these strains are indeed responsible for leaf scorches or polygala as shown by the fulfillment of core postulates on this host by strain isolated in Corsica. In France, we also find a focus contaminated by a recombinant strain of uh, multiplex and also, as you can see here, multiplex and sandy strain. This recombinant uh, strain presents alleles that are common to multiplex strains, but also to uh, multiplex strain here, and also to sandy strain. So <clears throat> as the parental strain of these uh, alleles are also present in Corsica, we can wonder if this recombination occur in Corsica or were introduced. One focus of Polygala myrtifolia contaminated by ST53 was found also in Menton, so in the French Riviera near Italy. And uh, it also has been recorded, but not officially demonstrated in Corsica and in mainland France. In France, we also were able to demonstrate that mixed infection occurred in plants. And uh, this mixed infection were illustrated by the fact that we were not able to properly assign the alleles when sequencing the genes that are involved in the typing of the strain. So this is quite technical. I can answer the question if you have. But this is generally considered as an evidence of mixed infection, so co-occurrence of various strain in the same plant. So there are evidence of a few, it's very, it's long, I have to, to, to hurry up a little bit. So there is evidence also that uh, Pilenus pumarius is contaminated by this multiplex strain in France, but there is no real evidence that it is involved in the transmission. Concerning the situation in Spain, the first uh, evidence of Xylella have been found in Balearic Island in October 2016 by the infection of cherry sample following official surveys that show some atypical or some leaf scorches on leaves. So these uh, plants in uh, Balearic Island were shown to be contaminated by a various range of Xylella fastidiosa multiplex uh, strains, so various uh, sequence types were identified on cherry or polygala myrtifolia in Balearic Island. In Balearic Island, currently, three islands, Mallorca, Menorca, and Ibiza, are contaminated by Xylella fastidiosa and by a large range of strains belonging to the multiplex, to the fastidiosa, and to the pauca subspecies. And a large range of plants are also contaminated by these various strains. And here you have some symptoms of show, um, observed in the Balears, in the Balearic Island, by the various strains. So I will go quickly on uh, these uh, symptoms and they are very um, classical 
and corresponds mostly to leaf scorches. And these symptoms in Balearic Island can be observed on crops, on ornamentals, but also in the natural vegetations. Here you have some symptoms on olive trees that are very similar to the one that were shown earlier on in Italy. And here also you can see the evolution of the symptoms here that are already present in 2012 in June in this tree. And this tree is nearly dead in 2016, so four years and a half later. So a situation here on olive tree following a multiplex infection that is also very severe. And here you can see this patchy uh, landscape in Balearic Island following presence of infection of multiplex on olive tree. Here also some other symptoms. And here are some symptoms on almond showing very important golden death of almond, which is the name of the disease. And you have some severe symptoms of fastidiosa fastidiosa on grape. Uh, Zalella fastidiosa has also been uh, evidenced in mainland Spain near Alicante. And this concerned the ST6 multiplex, so a strain that is not distant genetically from the one found in France. It's not exactly the same, but it's. Uh, not very different. So uh, near Valencia, two outbreaks were uh, observed. Sorry, here it should be named near Valencia. So two outbreaks were observed in June and uh, July 2000, 2017 and concerned ST6 strain on Almond. Later on, so <clears throat> the number of uh, outbreaks increases a lot, and now 130,000 hectares are demarcated in this area. And the infections are mostly found on almond trees and are the results of infection by only ST6 strains. So this is very important. And when you have mixed orchard by, with olives and almond, only almond trees present symptoms. A few other records were also made in Spain. One concerned one olive tree in uh, near Madrid, and also another record, but concerning polygala in greenhouses in Almeria. So these are were in uh, confined area and did not concern the, the landscape or orchards. So I'm sorry, I took uh, more time than I should have. It was quite difficult to, to determine in advance the time I need, as it is the first time for me to give this kind of presentation in front of a computer. It is not very easy, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I hope you were able to follow this talk. It was recorded. So if something remains unclear, first you can, of course, ask now some questions, but we will, we, you will also be able to go back to the talk later on. And I would, of course, finish by thanking you, of course, and all the people who participate in this work and especially the funding agency and the funding uh, European project, uh, such as Ponte and XF Actors, of course. Thank you for your attention. And I am all, all available, of course, to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. So there are some questions relating to the host uh, specificity of the strain of the subspecies fastidiosa, for example. So we mentioned at the beginning of the talk that uh, within the subspecies fastidiosa, there are strains that are responsible for diseases on grapevine, but also on alfalfa, on uh, almond, and um, what, what, well, there are some specificity for example, it has been shown in the States, there are various papers on that, that the strains that were isolated from grapevine are much more efficient on grapevine than on almond. And 
Similarly, the strain from the subspecies Pastidiosa that are isolated from almonds are much more efficient on almonds than on grapevine. So there is a kind of specificity within the subspecies uh, Fastidiosa. Uh, there are some questions concerning the asymptomatic uh, period. Somebody uh, asked if a plant can show symptoms at one time and become asymptomatic at another time. So yes, as uh, illustrated, when the symptoms are not so severe, they are mostly evidenced by leaf scorches. And so when you are dealing with perennial plants, the leaf may be replaced. And when the symptomatic leaves fall off the tree, then the new leaf may not be symptomatic. Done. So in uh, one sense, we can have the impression that the plant is a kind of relief, in fact, and doesn't show severe or as severe symptoms as earlier on. But it shall be mentioned that the bacterium is still present in the vascular vessels of the plant. And this could be an asymptomatic period just preceding the development of novel symptoms on the novel leaves. I hope I am clear. So one, somebody asked the question, if once ba the bacterium is in the xylem of a plant, so for example, an olive tree, it means that it will be present in all the xylema tissues in all parts of the plant. That's very important because Xylella fastidiosa, as most of this vascular agent, is not continuously distributed in the plant. Some xylem vessels can be infected and some others are not infected. So some part of the plant could be infected and symptomatic. So in the tree, for example, you can see that some symptoms, some branches present symptoms and some other do not present symptoms. But if the condition, environmental conditions are favorable, then the bacterium will multiply and with the systemic colonization of the plant could eventually colonize the entire part of the plant. But it can also remain quite uh, confined in some xylem vessels of the plant, depending on the environmental conditions, which include also the susceptibility of the plant, as we know that some plants can, are more susceptible than others. You are all aware, I think, that in Italy, the colleagues from Italy found some cultivars that present some kind of tolerance or resistance to Xylella fastidiosa. It doesn't show uh, symptoms while being present in the infected area. So you will have a webinar on that. So I encourage you to participate to this webinar. But yes, there are some differences in terms of susceptibility in a plant species faced to the same strain of Xylella fastidiosa. So the, there are a lot of studies that are ongoing to improve our knowledge on the determinants of this uh, resistance or tolerance to Xylella fastidiosa. It has been known for a while that some cultivar or grapevine are less susceptible than others to Xylella fastidiosa. So now it is also demonstrated for olive trees. And in the frame of the European project, various studies are ongoing to understand the determinant of this uh, less susceptibility that is observed in some cultivars to strain of xylella. So the incubation period in olive tree is quite variable and data that were uh, available from the literature were analyzed in the frame of the last uh, update of the, of the xylella pest risk assessment released recently by EFSA. So all these data were analyzed. And uh, as mentioned, this 
incubation period in olive trees can reach up to five years. So it is highly, highly variable in some plant species and especially in olive trees. So how do you uh, determine the asymptomatic period? Incubation period was another question. So in fact, while you are inoculated plants, so in confined condition in uh, Europe, of course, you, you know the beginning, you know the date of infection of the plants. And then you are able to observe plants to determine the occurrence of symptoms. And then you can also analyze plant by the mean of molecular detection methods to follow the progression of the bacterium within the plant tissue. So with this kind of methodology, you can see how long the plant can remain asymptomatic while being still contaminated by the bacterium. So it is a mix of observation of symptoms and analysis to confirm that the bacterium is present in the plant. Okay, this is very important to have both because if you inoculate the plant and you do not see symptoms, but you are not checking if the bacterium is present, you may also face some unsuccessful inoculations that can happen. Okay, uh, people were also asking the best period of the year to observe uh, symptoms. So this is very difficult to answer. There are different ex uh, experience of that in various parts of Europe. So it is not the same apparently in olive trees in uh, Apulia than in Corsica or maybe in, um, in Spain or in California. What we can say is that if you are dealing with a perennial plant like uh, olive trees, the symptoms can be seen even during the winter time because the leaves that were symptomatic last summer or last fall remain symptomatic during the winter time before their fall. So in olive trees, you can uh, see symptoms nearly all the year round when the symptoms are severe. However, when the symptoms are less severe, they can be enhanced by hydric stress. So during the winter time, the summer time, it can be more easy to see symptoms. But you have to have in mind that the capacity to see symptoms is not also linked to the capacity or ability to isolate easily uh, Zylella fastidiosa. Maria Saponari has a quite long experience on that and she mentioned, she mentioned that some period of the year during the summertime are not the most favorable one for the isolation while symptoms are very easy to see. And uh, from the literature you can see also that the best period of the time to isolate or to see symptoms is dependent on the plant species. So there is a question I um, do not really understand concerning transient. So if this person can uh, contact me by mail, then I will be able to, to reply. So I think there will be a talk on insect vectors. I have a question on insect vectors, so I will read them. How can Zylella arrive to xylem when transmitted by insect vector? Does it go through the phloem quickly without remaining in phloem? Once the bacterium is in the xylem of an olive tree, it means that it will be present in all tissue of the plant. What about the incubation period for old versus young olive trees in different varieties of the tree? So concerning insect vector, what can be said is that Xylella is vector by sap-sucking insect vector, vectors that are feeding in the xylem and only in the xylem because xylella is not located in the phloem. So this concerned a large range of insect vectors from the Cicadellidae, Cercopidae and Cicadidae family. These uh, uh, insects have special mouth parts that allow them to face the negative pressure in the xylem vessels. So the insect vector um, 
naturally goes to feed in the xylem vessels. And while it is feeding, it can release xylella if it is already contaminated or be infected by xylella that it will uh, suck from the sap of the plant. So xylella, once again, never goes to the phloem. It has absolutely no traits allowing it to resist in the phloem uh, vessels. So I al already answered the fact that xylella is present in the xylem vessels, so it can be present in some xylem vessels uh, or later on in all xylem vessels of the plant, but just keep in mind that the distribution of uh, vascular organism is not continuous in the plant. Xylella is aggregated in bacteria in biofilm, so it is present in much higher population in some uh, location than in others where it can not be present in the same xylem vessels. And uh, I think I answered the question I had thanks to Massimiliano for having uh, pasted all this question in this mail. And thanks uh, you for your attention and for these questions. Anyway, if you have any other question, it will be a pleasure for me to answer them if you send me a message or call me. <laughs>